that was the that was the first 12 apostles they were called by Jesus they saw him live they saw him die they saw him resurrect this was their and that was the function of those 12 apostles according to this verse Okay, here we go. I want to cover something. I was looking in our on our playlist, and if you haven't, um, if you've just been kind of following our channel and <clears throat> listen to stuff as it comes out, or maybe you dropped by and just started listening to some random videos, that's fine. But um, you probably should learn to navigate the channel. We've got playlists, and um, I do. I like doing stuff in series. And so it's, and it doesn't necessarily matter for everything that we teach, but like with our eschatology, which is the end times series, um, those we do in order. And so uh, if you don't watch those in order, in order, you can get lost because we've covered stuff before. In fact, I've had people say, hey, you've mentioned another video. Where's that at? So um, watch the little video when you first get on our uh, channel. Uh, it's, it's our featured video and it'll tell you how to navigate I find the playlist. It's that little bar at the top. So that's going to be important. And we have a whole playlist for, um, you know, the uh, Ephesians chapter four um, apostolic uh, giftings of the church uh, in Ephesians chapter four, verses 11 and 12, apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. And that whole passage in Ephesians chapter four, which is really significant. Now I've taught on all of them. In fact, I, I remember teaching on the apostle, but I don't remember what happened to it. So it's, it's not on the channel. So somehow it didn't get put up. It's obviously, I think it's my fault, but uh, I want to, I want to hit that again today. So at least I want to finish that series and put the one on apostle. And it's really important because um, there's whole groups of people in the church today who are like, oh, apostles, they don't exist anymore. They were just in the first century and, and there were just 12 or, you know, there were some others in the first century or what this, it just gets really confusing because most of what I hear is just not consistent with what I find in the New Testament. So I'd like to clear that up today and do a little teaching on the apostle. So hope you like this. I'm going to start off in Ephesians chapter four, verse 12, where Paul uh, is talking about this new um, new kind of institution. It's the new um, uh, thing, or it's, how do you say it? Jesus, you know, created this new category and it's called the church and both Israel and, and Gentiles come into it. And in order to come into it, you have to let go of everything. So you can't hold on to your Jewishness anymore. And as a Gentile, you can't hold on to your Gentileness anymore. You come and you are literally a new creation and you have one head, which is Christ. That's the idea. So he's been building that case here in Ephesians, but he comes to chapter four and he says, everyone who's in the church, um, Jesus gave gifts. Okay. There were those that were appointed that, that is going to oversee the church, oversee the body, and it's going to bring maturity. It's going to bring unity, all these kinds of things as he goes down into verses 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and to the end of the chapter. Okay. So he begins in verse 11 and he says, it was he, that's Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. The argument today is, okay, we have evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but apostles and prophets, you know, no more. Well, when you go into the church in Corinth and you go to places where apostles and prophets are, are you know, mentioned, and it's obvious here that he's not taught, he didn't give old covenant prophets to the church. He gave New Testament prophets to the church. He gave like there are that, that, that's supposed to function in the body even today. He gave apostles. And so an apostle, um, which can also be named a missionary. I know I'm in the Church of the Nazarene and we ordain missionaries. Honestly, they're apostles. That's what that term means, missionary. Um, I mean, you don't see missionary in this list. A missionary is an apostle. And so 
an apostle has a sending aspect to it. But before we get to all of that, let's just look a little bit of the apostles. First off, to clear up confusion, uh, clear up some confusion on, on, on apostles. Um, there are different kinds of apostles. The first apostle was Jesus. He is the, in Hebrews, he is the apostle and high priest. What's the verse? I think I wrote it down here. Yeah, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our profession. So Jesus was the first apostle. He was, he was the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Like He was the epitome of all of them. Okay, But then the next is he appointed 12 apostles. And these apostles were unique in that there will never be a 13th like them but they were the standard of every other apostle. And you'd say they're, they're unique. Yeah. They're, in fact, they're unique. We find in, if you go back with me, in Acts chapter 1, um, basically, they're dealing with the Judas problem. Judas was an apostle, and he abandoned Jesus. He rebelled. He sinned. And then he went out and hung himself. So Jesus appointed 12 apostles and what Jesus has said and what we find out in his teaching, like they have, they, the apostles, 12 apostles, not only had earthly roles and earthly significant significance, but when you look in Revelation and in Hebrews, they have eternal roles in the coming kingdom. You're like, really? Yes. Like that, like they have, they have, that was a, that's a big calling. It's a big deal. And so that's, that's talked about in, in, even in Revelation. Okay. So they had this business meeting down really in verses 21, 22, down through verse 26. And they're like, we got to have a replacement for Judas, but there's a qualification. And you'll hear, you might hear people talk about this. I don't know how much scholarly, uh, you know, rhetoric you hear (laughs) talking or teaching, but there's a group out there that say, oh, you know, Paul was supposed to be, he was supposed to be that, you know, and they didn't wait on him and, and you, he, Jesus called him to be an apostle and on, you know, on his, on, on the road and on, knocked off his donkeys blind and went in, you know, that whole deal. And, and so Paul, you know, and Paul wrote scripture, you know, Paul functioned just like the rest of the apostles, those other, you know, and so you're like, wow, he was an eyewitness. Okay. That was a big deal. But what's significant, see, Paul didn't qualify to replace Judas. The 12 apostles were this really unique category of people that Jesus called and they had a unique timing and a unique position and a unique role. In fact, it says here at the end of Acts chapter 1, verse 21, when they're thinking about a replacement, there's 120 in the upper room. And out of the 120, okay, only two of that 120 group, as part from the other 11 apostles, only two others even qualified to replace Judas. Listen to the language, verse 21. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. From us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. That's the big deal of the 12 apostle. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barabbas, verse 23, and Matthias. Those are the only two out of the rest of the 120 that even qualified that had been around from the baptism of John until the time when Jesus was taken up in his ascension. Paul was not there for that. So Paul didn't qualify for that. And they had a specific they had a specific role as a, as a witness of his resurrection. That was, the, that was the first 12 apostles. They were called by Jesus. They saw him live. They saw him die. They saw him resurrect. This was their, and that was the function of those 12 apostles according to this verse. And we don't have a lot in the New Testament on the function of those apostles in terms of their role. This is key. And so we know that Paul didn't acquire, didn't apply or he didn't um, he didn't qualify for this because he wasn't around during that time. So the twelve apostles they are a unique group. So unless you were alive back then, <laughs> you you saw his you know baptism, you saw his ministry, you saw his 
you know, death and you saw his resurrection, okay, you could be an apostle. But if you didn't see that, you don't qualify. So the first 12 apostles, Jesus was an apostle. And then the first 12 apostles, that's in a unique category of its own. But there's a whole group of other apostles that came and operated, functioned, and ministered in the early church that were not like these apostles. Even Paul, who was similar to these, he was himself an eyewitness of Jesus. He was not a part of that original 12. Now, you will you you might hear people say, well, the apostles, one of their roles was to write scripture. And that's why they did miracles and signs and why, why they were apostle, because they was to validate the writing of scripture. Well, again, Paul didn't qualify for that group. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And then there's arguments whether or not Hebrews was actually written by Paul. It's Pauline theology, but it's not his language. And there's a whole group of scholars out there that suggest another person closely associated with Paul. I, I heard an, a missionary one time talking about Barnabas is a great candidate. And that's, I mean, but however you want to talk about that, the writing of scripture in the first century as an eyewitness or being with someone who was an eyewitness like Luke. Luke wasn't an apostle. Luke was the doctor. He wrote his gospel. He was a doctor that followed Paul around. He wasn't even an apostle, but he was associated with Paul. So, you know, and Mark, Mark was the same thing. Mark was associated with Peter. He was the disciple of Peter. So, you know, it's when we're looking at what the 12 apostles were that a very clear function, as it says here in Acts chapter one. But then there was a whole nother list of apostles in the New Testament. Let me give them to you really quickly. Uh, James, the half brother of Jesus, Galatians chapter one, verse 19. He's the one who wrote the book of James. He wasn't a disciple. He wasn't even a believer in Jesus. He was Jesus half brother. Okay. Mom was Mary. Uh, dad was Joseph. Jesus dad was God, but they grew up in the same house. You know, they wrestled together. You know, James got Jesus old hand-me-down clothes. That's this guy here. He's an apostle. Uh, Barnabas acts 14, 14 is an apostle. Uh, Apollos, Corinthians chapter four, verses six through nine. He's an apostle. Timothy and Silvanius, first Thessalonians chapter one, verse one and chapter two, verse six. They were apostles. Epaphroditus, Phil, uh, Philippians chapter two, verse 25. Um, you got a couple unnamed apostles in second Corinthians chapter eight. Um, and then you got Andronicus and Junia. And Junia is a female name. And people say, well, it could have been a man. No, that's our problems in our day and time. That was not a problem in the early church. They didn't have that kind of problem. That is a woman who was an apostle. Listen to what it says. Romans 16, 7, Andronicus and Junia. Salute Andronicus and Junia, which was a woman, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are, no, uh, who are of note among the apostles. Like they're in that group. So you have all kinds of apostles in the New Testament, men and women, which I think is great. So what we're looking at here is when we come into Ephesians chapter four, Jesus gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some to be teachers. Those, it's called the five-fold ministry. And in that category on my playlist, the apostle, uh, I forget what it's even called, but it's the, it's the apostolic church stuff. Um, I got an interview on there where, with a guy uh, up in uh, uh, Minnesota, great friend of mine named Jason. And he, he walks us through the origin of all the NAR, New Apostolic Reformation language and a church and, and the heretical aspect of all of that. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is just as there are evangelists, pastors, and teachers, there are also apostles and prophets in our day and time that function in the church and have a role. Whether you call them apostles or you call them missionaries, they are itinerant. They have a different kind of weighty ministry that the evangelist has, that the pastor has, the teacher. And they're all, all of them are phenomenal. All of them are significant. There's no one that's greater than the other. They're just all different. But uh, uh, the apostle is the, is the, he is the, he is the, the one that goes forward or she is the one that goes forward and breaks new ground. And, and it's almost like a, they have aspects of some of the other ones involved in terms of shepherding this father kind of role and figure brings, brings rebuke, brings correction. It's, it's not, he's not an evangelist. He's not a kind of like an evangelist, but he's not a pastor though. He's kind of like a pastor. He's not a teacher though. He can teach, you know, those kinds of things, but it's just, they're the missionary. That's what the apostle is. They have gifts and graces specific to their calling in the body. 
They're mission oriented. They, they, they're protecting their, the evangelist is the one who literally brings deliverance and, and presents good news and, and makes converts. The apostle, I mean, you know, all of us do that. Okay. Shepherd is the one who shepherds those individuals who get saved, you know, and of course they preach every Sunday and people get, get saved. The pastor teachers teach about the salvation, but see the apostles, the one who guards the message, develops the message, roots the message, just a little bit different. And I don't, I don't know if there's really a, I don't know if there's really a definitive kind of final authority on what an apostle is. Because when you look throughout the New Testament, it's not like, oh, here, page whatever, here's an apostle, oh, there's the definition, oh, that's a guy. No, that, we don't have that. We don't have that for the evangelist. We know very little about the evangelist, other than we translate translate it one who, who preaches good news, who brings good news, which is the word uangeloin, which is where we get the word evangelist, who, and, and the good news is more than just, I believe in Jesus. It's being set free, being a new, cre- uh, a new creation born again. The evangelist is the one who like, who is a part of that initial process. They have an evangelistic aspect to their ministry. Um, so each of them are significant, but we don't have like a definition in the back of the Bible where you can, you know, oh, that's what it is. But Irregardless of the subtleties of you know what that definition is, we have a lot in the New Testament about what modern day apostles look like. They're missional. They have an apostolic ministry, and it still goes on today, and it's huge. I hope that helps you. The apostle, he's significant, or she is is significant. All right. Till next time.